Everybody give permission, please. We'll share the screen. There we go. Does that look right? Good. Good. So who will be our uh, volunteers this morning to help lead? I'll, lead? I'll do one. Mike. Okay, great. So we've got Mike and who else? I'll do it. Carol. Okay, Mike and Carol. Lovely. And so Mike will be uh, volunteer one and Carol number two. You <laughs> jot that down in case I forget. Mike, well, the important thing is, I guess you remember, not me. <laughs> All right, everyone else, if you would mute yourself and we'll begin. Good morning and welcome to Morning Devotions with the community of St. Andrews in Glenwood, Maryland. My name is Dina Van Claveren and I will serve as leader today. We are recording this service so that others can access it at a time convenient for them. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. Great is the Lord and worthy of all praise. Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor, power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let us praise and worship God who has called us together. Let us celebrate God's majesty and delight in the wonder of God's love. Together we shall confess our sins and receive assurance that we are forgiven. As we reflect together on our meditation, we can allow God's word to speak to us and ponder its meaning for our lives. In our prayers, we give thanks for God's goodness. We pray for others as well as for ourselves, and we offer our lives anew in Christ's service. All this we do because we believe in the presence among us of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and in the mighty power of the Holy Spirit. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. It shall rejoice with gladness and singing. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed and the majesty of our God. Then shall the eyes of the blind be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame leap like the harp, and the tongue of the dumb shall sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The, ran the ransom of the Lord shall return, and come with singing with everlasting joy upon their head. They shall obtain joy and gladness. And sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today we would hearken to his voice. It is good to be together and have time to meditate together. I have selected a reading from a pretty non, I don't want to say non-religious. Uh, it might not be something that you've read before, but it's been really meaningful to me. This book is called Nonviolent Communication, A Language of Life. And then it's got these four really important words, empathy, collaboration, authenticity, and freedom. And friends, those are the things I'm always working on in my own spiritual life. 
So when I saw this book about a year ago, sitting on Connie Bowman's kitchen counter, because it was required for one of her seminary classes, I said, what's this? And she said, that's, you know, a book I have to read for one of my classes. And I picked it up and I had a wedding to do that afternoon. I was stopping at Connie's beach house to change clothes for Ryan Perry's wedding in Delaware. And I got distracted by this book. I had to be told, go change for the wedding because this book um, was so captivating. So I wanna share just a little bit from the introduction of this book and about this book. And if uh, you want more, then I'll come back on Morning Devotions and maybe we can do a little series on working through these four things. The author is Marshall Rosenberg. And the front of the book says, words and the way we think matters. Find common ground with anyone anyone, anywhere, at any time, both personally and professionally. And uh, this is really applicable. Marshall Rosenberg has passed away. He was raised Jewish uh, in the Jewish tradition. And this book and his model for nonviolent communication has borne lots of fruit in Northern Ireland and in Israel, Palestine with various communities and with married couples and conflict and lots of others. So it's really applicable to being a person of peace in the world and in actual moments of conflict. So I wanna share, uh, starting with a poem uh, that is called Giving from the Heart. Uh, and it's lyrics from a song by Ruth Biebermeyer. I never feel more given to than when you take from me, when you understand the joy I feel giving to you. And you know my giving isn't done to put you in my debt, but because I want to live the love I feel for you. To receive with grace may be the greatest giving. There's no way I can separate the two. When you give to me, I give you my receiving. When you take from me, I feel so given to. And now I want to tell you a little bit about from the intro of the book about this peacemaking process and let you think about how it might apply to your day to day, how you might use this today. To arrive at a mutual desire to give from the heart, we focus the light of consciousness, I might say prayer, on four areas referred to as the four components of the nonviolent communication model. First, we observe what is actually happening in a situation. What are we observing others saying or doing that is either enriching or not enriching our life? The trick is to be able to articulate this observation without introducing any judgment or evaluation. That's quite a trick. To simply say what people are doing that we either like or don't like. Next. We state how we feel when we observe this action. Are we hurt, scared, joyful, amused, irritated? And thirdly, we say what needs of ours are connected to the feelings we have identified. An awareness of these three components is present when we use this nonviolent communication to clearly and honestly express how we are. For example, a mother might express these three pieces to her teenage son by saying, Felix, when I see two balls of soiled socks under the coffee table and another three next to the TV, I feel irritated because I am needing more order in the rooms that we share in common. She would follow immediately with the fourth component, a very specific request. Would you be willing to put your socks in your room or in the washing machine? This fourth component addresses what we are wanting from the other person that would enrich our lives or make life more wonderful for us. Thus, part of nonviolent communicating is to express these four pieces of information very clearly, whether verbally or by other means. The other part of this communication consists of receiving the same four pieces of information from other people. We connect with them by first sensing what they are observing, feeling, and needing, 
Then we discover what would enrich their lives by receiving the fourth piece, their request. As we keep our attention focused on the areas mentioned and help others do likewise, we establish a flow of communication back and forth until compassion manifests naturally. What I am observing, feeling, and needing, what I am requesting to enrich my life, what you are observing, feeling, and needing, what you are requesting to enrich your life. When we use this process, we may begin either by expressing ourselves or by empathetically receiving these four pieces of information from others. It's important to keep in mind that nonviolent communication is not a set formula, but something that adapts to various situations as well as personal and cultural styles. I refer to it as a language or a process. It is possible to experience all four pieces of the process without uttering a single word. I share this with you because after reading it, I have found over and over again in the stories that we have in the gospels from Jesus that he is observing and getting in touch with feelings. He's either having feelings or noticing feelings. And he often states a need and there's sometimes judgment. He, he, doesn't, he didn't read that sentence about um, doing it without judgment <laughs> or evaluation, um, especially when he's calling people, you brood of vipers. You can kind of hear the uh, judgment and the evaluation. And then he seeks in his relationships with people and in his actions, whether he's performing a miracle or sending people out to meet the need, to invite other people to help meet the need, right? This feels very Christocentric for me to communicate with compassion and empathy and to undo some of the violence that many of us grew up learning in communication. Not judgmentally, our ancestors were doing their best with what they knew how to do at the time. So I'm gonna ask you this morning and then we'll go back to our regularly scheduled uh, liturgy. Ask you this morning, just to close your eyes, and I'm going to do this as well, just close your eyes and observe how you've interacted this morning. Observe how you've interacted with other people, if, if that's applicable. Observe how you've interacted with yourself, with God, with objects. Pay attention to yourself. Observe yourself this very morning. Notice any feelings that come up as you walk through those observations, how you are feeling, and then try to connect that feeling, if you can think of one, to a need, a need you might have. And I'm gonna share a list of needs with you because this is the hardest part for me, is to articulate the need. Perhaps you have a need for autonomy or a need for celebration, a need for integrity and authenticity, a need to be creative. Perhaps you have a need for interdependence, some closeness or contribution to community. Perhaps you have a need for reassurance, respect or a need for understanding and warmth or emotional safety. Perhaps you have a need today for play, for some fun and laughter, or for spiritual communion, a need for beauty, harmony, inspiration, peace. Or perhaps you have a need for something physical, clean air, good food, some movement in your body, protection, physical expression, shelter, or touch. If you can think of one of these needs, then think of who you might invite in your life or how you yourself might reach out and request that those needs be met.
I'm going to take us back to our liturgy. And if you want to share about that, we'll stay on afterwards. Um, I'll end the recording. And if you want to share or talk through any of that, we can do that. If it's a longer conversation, we can make an appointment. But if you just have a couple of observations for the group, uh, we can do that afterwards. All right, volunteer two, Carol. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense and he will be my savior. Therefore, you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day, you shall say, give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy, for the great one is in the midst of you, is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. If we claim to be sinless, we are self-deceived and strangers to the truth. If we confess our sins, God is just and may be trusted to forgive our sins and cleanse us from every kind of wrong. Spirit of God, search our hearts. God of mercy, we have sinned against you and against others. We have sinned in what we have done and in what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, who died for our sins, forgive us all that is past and raise us to newness of life. Amen. Almighty God, who pardons all who truly repent, forgive you your sins, strengthen you by the Holy Spirit, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. God's mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Your faithfulness, Lord, is great. You are all that I have. And therefore, I will wait for you. You, O oh Lord, are good to those who wait for you. To all those who seek you. It is good to wait in patience. For the salvation of the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the, res the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Holy and ever-living God, by your power we are created and by your love we are redeemed. Guide and strengthen us by your spirit that we may give ourselves to your service and live each day in love to one another and to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
go ahead and unmute yourself and share anything this morning uh, for which you would request the prayers of this community as we are praying together or for which you give thanks. And I'll begin by asking your prayers for my friends, Mark and Christy and their son, Jake. Mark was on business in Vietnam and was involved in a car accident mm. and has a fracture in C1 and some other problems. And Christy is, I pray, flying to Vietnam today to be with him and to help manage his care. Um, it's a very scary time for them. And their son, Jake, is Everett's age, 19. I pray for the situation in Ukraine. For Alma, Maggie, and Ed. For Naomi. Eternal God, grant to us this day and every day such readiness and delight in following Christ that whether our lives are short or long, we shall have lived abundantly. Amen. O oh God, it is your will to hold both heaven and earth in a single peace. Let the design of your great love shine on the waste of our wraths and sorrows and to give peace to your church, peace among nations, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The almighty and merciful God bless us and keep us now and forever. Amen. Mm-hmm.